What wondrous love. Jesus said, I am the vine, you are the branches. Let us pray. We thank you, gracious God, for Jesus Christ, the true vine, with his roots eternally grounded in you. We rejoice that by grace we have been grafted into him to be branches on a vine which bears the loveliest hope of Jesus earth. Yet we confess that all is not well with the way we live. Please forgive us for the occasions when we have been the ones to introduce disease into the body, preferring its contamination to the vigor of health. Forgive us for neglecting to draw deeply on the sap of life, for our tendency to wander instead of growing on the framework you provide, for being content and sometimes even proud of a few sparks or undersized fruits, for the apathy which lets us go through some seasons without bearing any fruit. Have mercy on us. Please do not lose patience or sever us completely from the true time. Rather, heal our diseases, discipline and train our wandering tendrils, prune our unfruitful branches, and cut away our diseased ones. May we remain in Christ and He in us through all the changing seasons of life. Let us delight in bearing the fruits of love, which are the true purpose and joy. For your name's sake. Amen. Listen to these words of assurance. Jesus said, If you reside in me and my words reside in you, 
Ask whatever you will, and it shall be done for you. Friends, we have asked for forgiveness and correction. It has truly done, for, it has been truly done for us. It is being done for us, and it will be done for us. Thanks be to God. We come to a time of prayer, and we have semi-good news on Kathy's front and the fact that she came through surgery and not having any tremors, but we still need to remember her in prayer. We need to remember our Miss Alice Wardlow, who is at the heart of the Rockies um, in Salida. Um, and we still aren't sure what's going on other than she was dehydrated and, and some other things. So uh, the doctor's supposed to meet with them on Monday. Are there other prayer requests? For my sister, Diane, she's been going through tests and hoping they come out good. Okay. All righty, anyone else? Travelers. Travelers, okay. Alrighty. Let us go to God in prayer. Almighty God, your love is beyond our understanding. It is beyond our comprehension. And we lift up our hearts to you in prayer. Though we are captives of our sinful and rebellious ways, your love has released us. You have freed us to experience divine love in our own lives. Your atoning love has freed us from the penalty of sin, which is rightfully ours to pay. How can we express our thanksgiving except to praise your name and to allow your love to be seen in us? Grant us a determined faith and a fervent love that we might be reflections of your divine love. This morning, Lord, we come before you with our hearts full of concern and care for those that we know and love, as well as for concerns throughout our world. Lord, as we lift them to you now, we ask that you would be with all in need of surgery and having health concerns. Lord, you know their need, and we pray that your spirit would guide not only those in need, but those who care for them. Lord, we come before you lifting up our local community, and as our numbers of COVID have risen, and as several have shared that we thought because we got vaccinated, this wouldn't happen let us remember there are many who have not gotten vaccinated. And we pray, Lord, that the science and medical data behind it will help folks know that we are trying to get back to some type of normal. And we pray protection for especially those that are vulnerable, dear Lord. It's a headache to wear the mask and it's a headache to be quarantined and it's a headache to do many other things. But Lord, it doesn't compare to the awfulness of a death of a loved one or friend that will never return. So we pray that you would be with all, Lord, that are, are struggling during this time. Be with our authorities, especially our local authorities who pull back restrictions and then are considering putting restrictions back on and how frustrating that can be. <laughs> we pray that wisdom, Lord, that your wisdom would flow and that concern for all and not just a few would be the priority. We do lift up our first responders, our police, our firefighters, our EMTs, our nurses and doctors, those who rush into harm's way, sacrificing their own safety and health for the safety of others. Lord, we lift up our authorities here and in the state 
and our country. We pray for wisdom and guidance and harmony to do what is best for the whole nation. We do come to you with concern for the world as we see our brothers and sisters in India who struggle under the pandemic. And we ask that you would open up ways and venues that they can be brought to good health and that the sacrifice of so many would save lives. We ask that you would be with pastors and religious leaders and churches all over the world. We tend to get isolated in our own little valley area and we forget that, that there is a much greater world that is struggling, struggling to do ministry in ways that are very uncertain. We ask that you would be with any who suffer and are in trouble. Help them, Lord, to see there is hope. There is hope in you. And those that are struggling under disasters and bad weather, we thank you for the we thank you so much, Lord, for the water and the moisture that we've received. But we also know that fire season is here, and we just pray for prudence and we pray for wisdom and protection and that we would not suffer the fires that we have in the past couple of years. We ask that you would be with all that are have unspoken requests, things that they're not sure how to label or mention, things that are heavy on their hearts, people who are on their hearts, Lord, we lift them to you because you know what those requests are. And we pray that your healing power would flow and that the answers for those unspoken requests would be made clear and come to fruition. We ask that you would be with any who suffer violence. Violence, Lord, on either side. And we pray for those who see no other choice than to do violence because we know there is a choice and we know they don't know your love or they would not be making these choices. Raise us up to be your resurrection people, to live and to show forth promise and victory. We lift up Ray and Bobby Abbott and Ed, LaVon Caton, Shelley Cleave, Linda Clutter, Jackson Collier, Dora Mae Crawford, Jean Davis, Barbara Donahue, Marilyn Eagles, Brent Fayok, Isabel Geibel, Debbie Hall and family, Wes Harrison, Bill Hazard, Lita Haney, Carol Homer, Sue Jenkins, Ben Lewis, Rachel Marlene, Jonathan Maxwell, Judy Medina Baca, Joanne Milligan, Dakota Miller, Vicki Miller, Linda Mix's friend Yvonne, Mary Morfitt, Vicki and Gerald Myers, Wayne Phillips, Joeline Robinson, Marilyn Roberta, Charlene Schaefer, Matthew Stanley, Brianna and Noah Oliveri, Wendy Wallace, Alice Wardlow, Linda and Dick Wilson, Kathy Wright. And Lord, we lift up Diane, Lori's sister, and we pray for healing in her life and good news from the doctor. We ask that you would be with travelers who are traveling today and this weekend and in the weekends to come. We ask that you would be with those that have lost loved ones, the family of Glenn Alexander, Jamie Flickinger, Galen Harrison, Trisha Jones with the loss and her family with the loss of Panda, Van Kimberling, Cheryl Mix, Shirley Myers, Alice Phillips, Kevin Sanderson, 
And Lord, a special prayer for the family of Daniel Shepherd. For as my brother-in-law is being laid to rest this afternoon, give the family and the friends comfort and peace and the family of Jacqueline Stevens. Lord, we ask that you would hear our prayer, the prayer that you taught us to pray and that it would be for us more than just words we say, but a way to live. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The Old Testament reading comes from Psalms. So again, uh, Roy will be reading the light print and we'll be reading the dark print. From you comes my praise in the great, great congregation. My vows I will pay for those who worship the Lord. The poor shall eat and be satisfied. Those who seek the Lord shall praise the Lord. May your hearts live forever. All the ends of the earth shall remember and turn to the Lord. And all the families of the nations shall worship before the Lord. For dominion belongs to the Lord. Who rules over the nations. All who sleep in the earth shall bow down to the Lord. All who go down to the dust shall bow before the Lord. I shall live for God. Posterity shall serve the Lord. Each generation shall tell the Lord and proclaim his deliverance to a people yet unborn. Surely the Lord has done it. The epistle reading is, comes from 1 John chapter 4, verses 7 through 21. Love of God. Dear friends, let's love each other because love is from God, and everyone who loves is born from God and knows God. The person who doesn't love doesn't know God because God is love. This is how the love of God is revealed to us. God has sent his only son into the world so that we can live through him. This is love. It is not that we loved God, but that we loved us, that he loved us and sent his son as the fact sacrifice that deals with our sins. Dear friends, if God loved us this way, we also ought to love each other. No one has ever seen God. If we love each other, God remains in us and his love is made perfect in us. This is how we know we remain in him, and he remains in us, because he has given us a measure of his spirit. We have seen and testified that the Father has sent the Son to be the Savior of the world. If any of us confess that Jesus is God's Son, God remains in us, and we remain in God. We have known and have believed the love that God has for us. God is love, and those who remain in love remain in God, and God remains in them. This is how love has been perfected in us, so that we can have confidence on the judgment day, because we are exactly the same as God in this world. There is no fear in love, but perfect love drives out fear, because fear expects punishment. The person who is afraid has not been made perfect in love. We love because God first loved us. Those who say, I love God and hate their brothers or sisters are liars. After all, those who don't love their brothers or sisters who they have seen can hardly love God who they have not seen. This commandment we have from him. Those who claim to love God ought to love their brother and sister also. Please stand as you are able for the reading of the gospel. <clears throat> the gospel in John, John 15, 1 through 8. I am the true vine. I am the true vine, <clears throat> and my father is the vineyard keeper. 
He removes any of my branches that don't produce fruit, and he trims any branch that produces fruit so that it will produce even more fruit. You are already trimmed because of the word I have spoken to you. Remain in me, and I will remain in you. A branch can't produce fruit by itself, but re must remain in the vine. Likewise, you cannot produce fruit unless you remain in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. If you remain in me, and I in you, then you will produce much fruit. Without me, you can't do anything. If you don't remain in me, you will be like a branch that is thrown out and dries up. Those branches are gathered up, thrown into the fire, and burned. If you remain in me, and my words remain in you, ask for whatever you want, and it will be done for you. My Father is glorified when you produce much fruit, and in this way, prove that you are my disciples. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Amen. You may be seated. <coughs> Abide in me. Our remaining in the vine is another title that we could give it. Let us go to God in prayer. Lord, we come before you seeking your guidance and your wisdom as we listen and study what you mean by abide in me. Lord, we would love to say that we are those juicy grapes producing wonderful fruit, but we know we have failed you in many ways. So we ask that you would open our ears open our eyes, open our hearts and our minds to the message you have for us today, that we may be more of the vineyard you would have us to be. In Jesus' name, amen. Five times Jesus said, abide in me, in his teaching. And as we talked and listened about his words last week, when Jesus says something several times, there's no mistake. We need to pay attention. His teaching on the vine and the branches makes it clear that our, what our part is and what his is in this setting. Our priorities and how we should make decisions. Being a branch is like being the servant who obeys the master's direction and does not take into his own hands how things should be. It's not up to us to make the plans. The spirit of Jesus directs us. That is what it's meant to be spirit filled. So how do we abide? And how do we encourage abiding behavior? And perhaps the most important question, what does abide mean? We need to consider some sort of teaching by example. And so here Jesus gives us the example of the vine. You can probably think of many ways where we can cultivate our ability or our tendency to desire Christ. But let's consider these ways first. Silence is a good practice. You remember we practiced that last week. Silence shouldn't be an occasional or unusual event in worship or at home in our private practice. Silence is a space where we can let God take control where we surrender ourselves to the working of the spirit and to the voice of God. So carving out time for silence should be a priority. Second, and it may sound the opposite, but music is a way to abide in Christ. I believe that 
music is the language of the soul. The directed sound with its melody and its words is a deep communion with Christ and one another. And in a few minutes, I will ask you to abide using music. It could be an instrument. It could be singing. It's not as much important as how it's given, but whether it speaks to the soul. The first two instances are of surrendering, putting our selfish desires aside, of setting ourselves into the attitude of worship and prayer. The third one is different. It is heightened to what we have in scripture today. It's paying attention to the word. Now you may remember last week, this is almost identical. Listening to his voice. Jesus wept. Remember that? Not once, but several times. He wept because of missed opportunities. He didn't wag his finger at those who just didn't get it. No, it had to be a real opportunity, the real commandment. Like the other commandment is about loving one another. Now, some would say, if you have difficulty loving others, this scripture says you're not of Christ. You're not connected to the vine. Well, I'm not going to preach a hellfire and brimstone sermon today, but I would say maybe the other part of that scripture says, love your neighbor as yourself. Maybe there's some self-care that needs to happen. Maybe there's some things in your own life you've not been able to forgive yourself for or that you feel that you're unworthy for our Lord and Savior and maybe that silence and that music and that time is where Christ can minister and heal you for just as we know in the airplane when they tell you you've got a small child or an elderly person take care of your oxygen mask first before taking care of someone else's. And so if you find it hard to love others, maybe it's time that you spent pruning yourself, as God calls it. Jesus could have just mentioned the whole vine thing and just left it just at that. I am the vine. It's a powerful statement. But because the image of the vine involves and is in many scriptures, not just this one, it allows us to see that a vine bears fruit to feed many, but it also can wither when it's neglected and it's not connected to its source of strength and it becomes unconnected. I should have brought the plant that's in on the stairwell, but Lori's done a magnificent job of, of bringing that thing back to life because we were afraid it was going to die. But the neat thing about that plant is if you happen to brush by it and something breaks off, a little piece breaks off, take it with you and put it in some dirt for it will continue to grow. Is that not what we are to do? to continue to grow? Jesus differentiates between the vine and the branches. Who's the vine? Answer, who is the vine? Jesus. Thank you, Jesus is. Who's the branches? Us. We are. Don't get that priority mixed up. For you have to have that vine 
to be able to restore the branches. He's bringing the source closer to us. Now you have to remember that when Jesus was with the disciples, the Jewish people believed a Messiah was coming and that the earthly kingdom would become God's kingdom here. They had been in isolation without a physical, tangible God there. And I think about the washing of the feet and just hugging our Lord, the children at his knee, that personal contact. So when he in flesh came, no longer are those thoughts about a God way far off. God is there in the presence. We have to stay connected so that we can abide in Jesus. The people of God still produce fruit. That is how God has decided how well his people are flourishing. But we need to stay close. Here comes the hard part. In a vineyard, the best grapes are produced closest to the central vine. But they do need to be pruned. I wish I could say that's not true, but it's true. Pruning is an art form as much as a horticultural technique. It looks like you're killing or a plant or a bush or whatever you're pruning. But if pruning is not done, then the plant always will be weak. If the pruning is done, it comes back stronger. Pruning, I'm told, is necessary for a certain kind of plant or it will wither and die. I believe roses are like that. We all know of plants that if we don't prune them back, that the flowers won't come. Now let's step away from that metaphor for just a moment and realize that pruning hurts. Cutting away what we've become attached to, no matter how unhealthy it is for us, is hard and painful. It makes us ask the question that we don't really want to admit. Is it worth it? Is it worth the struggle, the pain, the self-denial to give this life that Jesus offers us? To enjoy the abundance he wants to pour out on us? Is the fruit we bear the commandment to love God and neighbor equal with passion and service worth the effort? I have said these things to you so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete, John 15, 11. He says it is more than worth it. And we have chosen to trust him the moments of real joy we experience in life will be caught up in loving and being loved. So we want to know more of him. Stay close and abide in him. We're learning to abide. But the short answer is we need to be grafted to the vine. Vines and abiding, pruning and being cut off but if we burnt vigil out on the limb, grafting is part of how offspring can happen. Look again at abide in me and I abide in you. He doesn't leave the disciples. Instead, he is telling them that he will never leave them again. His physical body may leave him, leave them, but he will never leave them again. And he lets them know that we, apart from him, can do nothing. 
we wonderful human beings discover all this technology and all these wonderful things and we begin to think a little bit too much of ourselves because of all the wonderful things our brains can come up with but just like i asked you last week who gave you that brain and who gave you those thoughts if we surrender and accept christ he becomes our true branch and he has our true vine god has a purpose for our his branches and it says to produce spiritual fruit so i close as we prepare for communion with that old hymn abide in me and I pray that it will be a time of silence and centering. I'm asking you not to sing, just to bathe in the beautiful sound that comes. And know that as we partake in communion today, we're partaking in being the branches on the vine that is Christ. So we come to a time of communion. The Lord be with you. And also, and also with you. With you. Lift up your hearts. Lift up hearts the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give to the and praises. And so, with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might. Heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. 
And so, in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. All honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. On the night in which Jesus was betrayed, they were eating the Passover meal, and he took the bread, and he raised it and blessed it. And the disciples probably felt like, okay, this is different. This is not quite what the Passover normally is. And then he broke it and he gave it to them and he said, take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. And as often as you do it, remember me. So the disciples did as they were told, not completely understanding, but knowing that he was trying to tell them who he was and who he would be. Then at the end of the meal, he takes the cup. And if you remember when we did the Seder, the final cup is really supposed to have a different twist. And instead, he raises it and blesses it and then gives it to them and says, take and drink. This is the blood of the new covenant poured out for the sins, your sins. As often as you do this, remember me. Again, the disciples did as they were told. And it wasn't until a few hours later that they began to see the true vine. The vine that was in his body on a cross for us. The vine of the cup, not just of juice, but the cup of the new covenant shed for us. So if you have your cup and your wafer, I would invite you at your own convenience, at your own leisure, to break the seal. And I advise breaking the seal first, and then you can pull the top off to reveal the wafer and then the cup. And I just want to share today that lemon wash was sweet enough to give me a new plate and cup for us to use. So I look forward to the time when we can actually break that bread and I can give it to you and you can dip it in the cup. But for right now, it's the body of Christ given for you and the blood of Christ. Yeah. The next part of our service deals with our commitment, not only for taking of the Lord's table, but of giving what we have, what's been given to us, pressed down by leaving your offering here or mailing it to the church or giving online or texting a donation. I want to welcome Vicki Miller and Charles Cooper and Richard Drum who are watching via Facebook Live and the ones that I've already welcomed on Zoom. Our hymn of commitment is take our bread. And as we sing this song, may the words mean taking what we have partaken of today in service and taking it into the world. Would you please stand? Thank you. 
now and love one another because the love is from God. Proclaim God's salvation to every generation. Remain in Jesus Christ and like branches in the vine, draw your life from him. And may God, the vine grower, tend you and make you fruitful. May Jesus Christ abide in you and give you life. And may the Holy Spirit cast out all fear and fill you with God's love. We go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. amen. And if you want to come and say hello to those that are on Zoom, you are welcome to do that. I have a little cute little thing that I found that you can pay attention to or not. Get ready to party like there's no mañana. Here in the U.S., Cinco de Mayo is huge. I bet the fiesta is bigger in Mexico, right? Wrong. Cinco de Mayo is a pretty minor holiday there. A lot of people confuse it with Mexican which isn't right either. That's September 16th. Cinco de Mayo celebrates the Battle of Puebla. It was a part of a greater fight between over what else? Cash. Mexico owed France a lot of money and France saw an opportunity Hi, Janet. Hi, Hi Charlene. How are you? Hey, Charlene. 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 Hey, so about it's been getting about 98 but that's actually, hot. Well, I don't not too bad for you, it, you know up until 100 i i can handle it but after that then i it's like stay in the shadow yeah and your doggy pal how are they, how's he doing he's doing okay he was he's been mean this morning so uh oh I wanted to go like for a walk. In trouble on Sunday. <laughs> I wanted to go. I know. I wanted to go for a walk this morning, and he absolutely would not go. He, it's like, catch me, catch me, and I said, I'm not playing games. So, <laughs> didn't get a walk this morning. <laughs> but when, anyway, when, when are you planning to come back? Uh, my last doctor's appointment is 13th. So I'll be coming back after that. So you're going to celebrate your birthday down there. Yeah. Well, you know, the, he, last year we did nothing and I would turn 70. So it's like no more big damn deal on birthdays. <laughs> <laughs> sure. Every well, year, maybe every they'll have one for you. Every year is a big deal, yeah. Charlie. Well, have a good one. Yeah, have a good one. See ya. Okay, bye. I guess Brent's decided he's not gonna. He had he had his photo on earlier. So the child's picture that we have is that one from her seven. That's what I'm gonna see him for years and years ever in the day. Thank you. 